Hello violin players, we are going to be working on the first four lines of Minuet 2. Minuet 2 is a beautiful, beautiful piece, has a lot of great skills in it, um, so I want to make sure that we have time to focus on every great skill in this piece because it's totally worth it. Um, so this is the first four lines and then we'll chat about it. as minuet one if you've played that. You have F sharps on your D string, a high two, and then you're going to have low twos, C natural, G natural on your A and E, e string. So F sharps on your D string, high twos. On your A string, C naturals, low twos. On your E string, G naturals, low twos. So if you need to mark any of those low twos on your um, A string or E string, just put a little down arrow over those notes. Um, and they'll be that way for the entire piece for this one. So I want to focus on measure two to start. Measure two has a hooked bow with a giant string crossing. So we're going from our low two on our E string to our third finger G on our D string in a hooked bow. So it's a big cross for both your left elbow to make sure that you're crossing over to get that third finger in tune, and also for your right to make sure that you're getting a clean string crossing. So let's practice that. All right, let's just do that crossing without the hook bow a few times. So we're going from a low two on our E string, cross both your elbows, and you hit a G on your D string. Let's do one more of those. Cross. Okay, now let's add the hook bow. So we're going to go down, up, up. Ready? And go. And you're getting to the tip or close to it on that down bow, so you have enough room for both your up bows. Again, ready? Go. And let's do one more. Ready? Go. It's a lot of do days, a lot of eighth notes hooked together. Do day, do day, do day. And then measure two, do, do, do. So it's hard to find a speed that's right for this. That's why we're doing these measures separately at first. Um, so for measure one, I have a little trick for your hand position because it starts on your D string and makes its way all the way up to your E string. So this is going to sound strange, but set a B first. Set a B on your A string first but your first note isn't a B, right? It's a G. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna cross that third finger over independently, planting that first finger on the B, third finger goes across to the G on your D string. That way your hand is set for your first few notes. So let's try the first three notes. It's a G, so my B is planted, a G, and then I cross my bow over to that B that's already down. And then I go next to the D on my A string, the third finger. So my third finger does a little hop, kind of like um, in Song of the Wind, if you remember that. So my first finger is planted on my B, third finger reaches independently over to my D string, and I'll do the first three notes, and you can echo those after me. You try plant that B, G crosses over independently, One more time, plant the B, ready, go. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if we're going on, keep that bead down or hovering really close, and then when you cross over to your E string, that second finger can just go down right next to it. So by planting that B, you have your entire hand position mapped out. Okay, so I'm gonna go do the first four notes now. Plant the B, cross your third finger over to your D string, Okay, let's do that again. Plant the B, cross your third finger over. Ready, go. And if that high G sounds a little off, make sure that you're doing a low two. Let's do that one more time. Plant the B, G crosses over to your D string independently. Here we go. And now, if we go on, lift up for the open A, and then your fingers can go over to your E string for the last two. Okay, so let's do that entire measure. Plant the B, G crosses over independently, wrist is straight, of course. Ready, go. bonus is the first note of measure two as well. All right, let's do that again. So measure one plus the first note of measure two. B is down, ready, go. Good, and one more time for good luck. Ready, go. to measure two and you'll have to work up um, the speed of this eventually so that your quarter notes in measure two don't sound super duper slow but get it accurate first before you speed it up so here are measures one and two again at that slow speed B's down G crosses over ready go your G could also cross over to that D string independently. You don't need to bring the whole family over just for that one little note. So you could do an independent crossover with that G as well. All right, let's put that, those first two measures together one more time, and then we will have completed our work in the first line because the next two measures are the same. All right, here's um, the first two measures. B is planted, G swings over, ready, go. until you got it. For some people, the first line getting that accurate is an entire week's project along with your orchestra music and other stuff. So um, it's pretty challenging, but it happens so many times in this piece that you will have completed three entire lines of the song just by learning those first two measures. So I'm going to move on to the second line. It starts with the fourth finger. And the main thing for this is to make sure you're using enough bow on your quarter notes and also that you're remembering your low twos. Those are the two mistakes I hear. I hear um, rhythm and then low two mistakes on this one. So make sure that you plant your fourth finger, have good hand positions so you can reach those low twos, and I'll just play through that second line for you. save enough bow for three beats on that last one. When I'm setting up my hand position for the first two measures, I'm crossing over and kind of making, I'm making a bridge or a tunnel um, with my fourth finger to my second finger and my third finger so that everything is remaining in that low two position when I'm on my E string. So I'll do those first two measures. They're hard to get in tune. You can echo them after me. Ready, go. Go that, ready, go. One more time, ready, go. All right, and then moving on to the third measure, 
of that second line starts with a low two. I had a student once call this the head, shoulders, knees, and toes, two measures, because that's the song that popped into his head when he played it, and other students have found that helpful. So I'm letting you know that too. So this is the third measure of the second line. Do that again. Ready, go. Okay, putting that second line together. Repeat it if you need it. I'm just going to do it once. Ready, go. Same as the first. So we are moving on to the fourth line. Starts with the fourth finger. Remember those low twos? I'm going to play through that fourth line for you. Ready? And. First two measures aren't so bad. Make sure you're using enough bow on your quarter notes so that you're holding it long enough here. The first two measures of that line again. And then we've got our low twos on our A string as well. Okay, those are um, the first two measures of the fourth line. In the third measure of the fourth line, we have a new rhythm. It's called a triplet. And um, that's when you put three notes into one beat. A good word to say when you're doing triplets, a good word to say in your head is evenly. So that you say, um, you hold all three notes for the same amount of time. So I'm going to do that triplet. Evenly. I'm going to do it again. And it has a low two on your A string as well. And then after that you have a hooked bow. D, F sharp, high two. And then it ends on a three beat G. So here are the last two measures of the fourth line, starting with our evenly triplet. Here it is again, we'll do it a few more times. Ready, go. Another, ready, go. practice tips you need for the first four lines. Um, you can always go back and play along with the run through that's earlier in the video once you get it worked out and you can um, find a speed that works for you. All right, the next video will focus on the remaining lines. So good luck.